Hey there, how you doing? It is Saturday evening. Um, I ended up not vlogging during Thanksgiving. I just wanted to spend time with my family and I had other things on my mind as well. Um, worrying about Teddy and just other things. So um, apologies, but I did not record any of that stuff while I was back home with my family. Um, Thanksgiving was my mom and my dad. So my dad drove up from San Diego to be there. So. Um, yeah, that's that. I just had a big plate of leftovers. <laughs> that was my leftovers. I just ate it, and now I feel really full and icky. But I'm hoping that I don't feel full for that long because I also have some cake. Oh, boy. Uh, my mom made this really good banana chocolate chip cake. She also made it while my sister was visiting just a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. So my mom made it again. So I've got some slices down here and... um. What is this, like, saran wrap? So maybe I'll have a slice later if I feel up to it. <laughs> yeah, so um, everything went well. I was at my mom's from Thursday till um, <clears throat> today, Saturday. I just got back. And today I was cleaning and washing my car. Tomorrow I'm going to go downtown, do a few errands. I need to get my eyebrows done. I'm hoping that the woman I like is back at the threading salon, back from her vacation. And I need to go grocery shopping, so, and some other odds and ends, you know, wash makeup brushes, hand wash clothes, that kind of thing. Um, I wanted to tell you about how the cats did. So this buddy right here, it looks like he's about to fall asleep. Um, Stitch had a wonderful time at my mom's house. He was the belle of the ball. He was very outgoing, and he always had his tail up, and he was walking around everyone, asking to be at pets and get scratches and love. He was looking out the back door and watching the birds. Stitch had a wonderful time, and he was just, like, really happy, and he, he loves it at my mom's house. He always has a great time, and he tries to befriend my mom's cat, Lily, the black and white cat who got lost um, back in September for a week. Anyways, um, yeah, so he had a good time, and yeah, he was enjoying himself, but the same cannot be said for little Figaro, who was scared. He's been to my mom's house hmm, soon after I adopted him. It was either in July or August, so I think he's only been there once, and it's been a while. Um, yeah, so when we he, he was not happy in the car. He was meowing and, like, really letting me know he was not happy to be in his carrier in the car for an hour. And then we got to the house, and he just hid underneath the bed a lot and hid in my bedroom, and or the bedroom I stay in. And he, you know, he didn't want to come out. He didn't come out into the living room. He was, like, scared of my mom and my dad. And he's really not happy with my mom's dog, Mia. It was a terrier mix who kept, like, showing a lot of interest, and Mia kept coming by and trying to smell him, and, um, yeah, Mia was pretty obnoxious. She just kept coming back and, like, being like, where's the cat, where's the cat, where's the cat? And Mia was going room to room, sniffing things out and trying to find Fig. So that was kind of a handful. Sometimes it's a little tough there when, like, you know, Stitch wants to be friends with Lily, my mom's cat, and Lily hisses at him, and we're afraid they're going to get into a spat. And then Mia's trying to find Figaro, and she's obnoxious, and he's scared, and, you know, just dealing with the different relationships. <clears throat> and, of course, my mom's dog, Teddy, is still very sick. He had one seizure while I was there that I saw, and he had another one after I left, so. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for tonight. And I'm actually thinking about starting to decorate for Christmas. I don't have that much decorations. I do have my big fake pink Christmas tree with pink lights on it that I bought last year. It's really, like, obnoxious, but I love it. Um, I do need to get a tree skirt. But the one I saw at Target recently was, like, 3 bucks. I'm not spending that much on a tree skirt. So I need to figure out what to do with my little tree. And then I've got a mini flag put out in front of my apartment, you know, little, little things, little things. And of course, one of my Stitch, it, he's always in his Christmas outfit. This is, I think I got him last year, a little stuffed Stitch doll, and he's got a Christmas sweater on. You can't really take it off, so he always has it on. I keep it up with my Stitch collection. This is Duffy dressed as Stitch, and then this is just a, another Stitch in his original form when he's like Experiment 626, so... And then my stitch. <laughs> my little stitchies. 
yeah, so that's it for now. And, um, yeah, tomorrow I'll go downtown and hopefully have some fun with that stuff. So, all right, see ya. So I was just hanging out with the boys, and I thought my stitch looked pretty funny here. He's just, um, hanging out, hanging out on the couch. Big yawn there, buddy. Two arms on this side, and then his body over here. <laughs> He's watching me. And this is how he just sits sometimes, you know, with his butt here and his legs up there. And then he started to fall asleep and drift off and then wake up. So he's just hanging out on his couch, you know. Sometimes he'll r sit along and it's really funny because it kind of looks and look like that monorail cap. He, or kind of like he's just hugging the couch. Anyways, and then Fig is over here just um, napping. So, yep. Hello, boys. Good afternoon. It's Sunday. I've had a crazy, crazy morning. It just went bananas. I was going to go downtown. You know, I need to get my eyebrows done, and I had some things to do, and, you know, oh, I'm so glad to be home. I was so stressed out. So I was in my car, my nice new Honda Accord that I bought last year, last September, and I was just up the street a few minutes away, and... I was stopped at a light, and then all this like smoke came up out of my car. It came out of the engine, and there was like a snap or some weird noise, and then my car started smelling and filling up with like, not filling up with smoke, but it was smelly. And I was like, oh my god, what just happened? At first I thought, is that you, the car next to me? Because this is brand new. My car is one year old. Why would it do this? So I, I was just really stressed out and freaked out, and um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> So um, there was a bicyclist, two bicyclists nearby, and the man came over and offered to help, and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I called 911 because I didn't know, like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was stopped right in front of an intersection, a very busy intersection, mind you. And I, I called them, and I said, my engine just went up in smoke, and I don't know what to do, and can you tell me what to do? Help me. Um, and I said... I don't know what I said. I was just freaked out. And she said, okay, hang on. Don't don't start your car. Don't move your car. Just wait there. Um, and I did have these other two men come up to my window and offer to help push the car. So that was really nice of them. I, maybe because it's such a busy intersection. And I don't know. It was so nice of people to offer to help me. But I said, no, I'm supposed to wait. I'm not supposed to move my car. Um, that's what the woman at 911 said. And then eventually police cars started showing up. But at one point, I had three police cars behind me, which kind of seemed like overkill. And I was all embarrassed. And I started, you know, I took my Xanax. And then I, I was just I was just really upset and worried. And I didn't know what to do because I kind of, you know, tend to panic a bit. Um, and, you know, the guys, they decided, okay, let's push your car. So there was one cop car in front of me kind of blocking oncoming traffic. And then I had two cop policemen, one on either side of me, and um, they were helping to move the car, to steer it, or to, to, to push it. And the steering wheel is really, really hard to use when it's in neutral. It was really hard, so the cop, like, he had these gloves on, and he was using them to help me <laughs> turn the wheel, because it's so hard to turn it. So we pulled the car off to the side, and then the fire department came up with a big fire truck, because they thought that, um, there was a report of like a vehicle on fire, and I said, no, there's no fire, there's just smoke. <laughs> um, so then they left, because they were like, there's no fire, we're out. Um, and then the three cops left, and they had actually called AAA for me somehow, I think in the incident report or whatever. And they'd already called it, so I didn't need to call for a tow truck. Um, but then I waited and waited and waited, and then I was like, oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? What happens next? So I tried to call USAA because I have my car insurance with them, and I tried to speak to an agent, but no one's working because it's Sunday, so I couldn't talk to anyone there. And then I didn't need to call AAA, so then I called local car rental places, and not all of them are open on Sundays, but the local airport did have a place that was open, so I called Avis at the Santa Barbara Airport, and I reserved reserved a Toyota Corolla? Why do they let you reserve cars and then they say, oh wait, no, we, we can't hold anything for you. Anyways, and I started calling a bunch of friends and I, I was like calling, I texted a DT, I called Alicia, I called Lynn, I called Shane, he was one of the first people, and I also texted Mike. I was like, oh, I gotta get someone to help me. I need someone to help me like get from the, you know, the car dealership to the mechan or the auto, <sighs> my brain is still fried, the airport, so I did 
have a friend Shane come by and it's wonderful because he actually also has experience, personal experience with agoraphobia. So um, I was, it was just great. He was like one of the, one of the perfect people to have because he knows and he, he can help calm you down. Him and his wife are both very familiar with like anxiety and you know, it just helped calm me down. Plus he had a really cool car. They have a brand new VW Golf and it had like a moonroof and this little emergency button up top and all these neat stuff in there. Um, yeah, so we, he and I drove to the Honda dealership where I bought my car and then the tow truck came along and I put my key into this little envelope and gave it to the service people who were closed on Sunday so I had to put it through the door. It's, it's like Sundays, that's like the bad day. You don't want anything to happen apparently. You can't control these kinds of things. Um, I know I'm a little bit hopping around, but the AAA guy pulled out a broken cord for my car and said it's the serpentine cord or something. It sounds like a snake, basically. So that's what broke. It should be an easy-ish fix. Definitely under warranty, but oh my god, nothing should be happening this early. And I did have an oil change not too long ago, so... Um, yeah, so finished up with that, signed up the stuff with the AAA guy, gave him my card, whatever. He was really nice, by the way, because <coughs> I was, like, having trouble breathing, and I was really upset, and I had been crying, and he was just really nice to me. <laughs> and he's probably like, geez, a little smoke from your engine, and this is your reaction? You know, I was really embarrassed about getting so upset. Um, yeah, and just, you know, just the whole picture. So, yeah, then Shane drove me from the dealership to the airport, and he offered to go in with me, but I said no, I didn't want to take it more if it's time. Speaking of which, I need to get him a gift card as a thank you. He said he and his wife like Starbucks. I was trying to find out, what kind of coffee do you like? Do you like wine? You know, I need to do a thank you for him, so I'm going to get him a Starbucks gift card as a thank you for coming and helping me out. Um, and I went to the Avis, and I told the woman I had reserved a Toyota Corolla, and she said, we can't really hold cars for you. <laughs> Why did you say you would? And they gave me a Toyota Prius, which I then started to spaz out again about driving because it doesn't have like um doesn't have a key. You have to press a start button to start it, and then the the gear shift looks all funny, and it's just it's totally different. But actually driving it is fine. It's just the, some of those other mechanical things that are a bit weird. So anyways, I'm home now. I'm home. Stressful stuff, cats. I told the boys I wouldn't be too long. I'd just go downtown, do a few things, and come back home. But instead, all that happened, and that sucked up about an hour and a half at least, just dealing with all the car stuff. And then I went downtown afterwards because I was like, well, I still got to get my eyebrows done, clearly. I have to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got coffee, got my eyebrows done, got some groceries. Um, I'll show you my groceries, actually. My Whole Foods fancy groceries, um, and then I'll put them away, and then maybe talk to my mom a bit, and tell her everything that happened. Okay, I got some bagels, and part of the reason I got bagels is because I have this really good cream cheese from a place nearby my mom's house, so, um, for the day after Thanksgiving, I bought bagels for my mom and I, and then this homemade cream cheese in honey walnut, and I have some leftover, um, cream cheese, so I thought, well, geez louise, I need to buy some bagels, and I've never tried bagels from there. They, they say it's from Gutenplans, which I've never heard of. Sounds a little German, though. Um, oh, because I was really stressed out, I was like, I need a treat, I need chocolate. So I bought this box from Jessica Foster Confections, and she's local, I've actually met her, and she's very nice. I got the dark chocolate selection, and I'm not really sure what each truffle is, but I think when you open it up, there should be a map or guide telling you what's what, and I actually didn't get that much. I got some more of these cream sodas, Virgil's cream soda, and then some of this, usually way overpriced, watermelon, but I saw this big thing and I thought, 237 that's cool, because um, most of the other ones of the same exact size were like $5, so I don't know why this one was so much cheaper, but I took it. I was like, I'm going to get the cheapest watermelon. I don't know why it's so much cheaper than everything else, but I'm getting it. And then I'll have some fruit. I need fruit. And then one of the big reasons I 
wanted to go was to get some yogurt. I really do like this brown cow yogurt, and it's a nice, healthy thing for me to have at work, <laughs> which I need. So I just got a bunch of the cherry vanilla, which is my favorite flavor. Hang on, let's sort these out. And then one in the peach, because I had it recently and liked it. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got at Whole Foods. So it's just been a crazy morning. <laughs> Um, and I still need to figure out, like, all the other stuff on the other end, like, when my car does get fixed, I'll have to return the rental car and then find someone to help me go from the rental car place to the dealership. So we're not done yet, but the big stress is done. The big morning chaos. Hey there, um, I just wanted to show you the rental car that I've got, um, the Prius, so you can see what it looks like. There we go. It's silver. Um, it's very small and good for getting in and out of, like, tight spaces, which is nice. <laughs> and the trunk is back here. I personally haven't figured out how to open up the trunk. So, um, yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I've got the rental keys here, so I'm just going to unlock it. It makes a noise. And then getting inside. It's pretty nice and clean. Um... When I got a car from Enterprise in the past, it was not clean, so I like that this one is pretty clean. Um, I feel kind of close to the <laughs> ceiling, and the dash is really, I guess, short is the best way I could describe it. Um, steering wheel is right at my knees. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way to adjust it, though, um, you know, to make it go up higher, but I just haven't figured that out yet myself. Um, so the funny thing is... When you start the car, um, you know, you don't need a key or anything. Some people are probably really used to this, but personally I'm not. So you just hit this power button and hold it down, and then you wait. I had the radio on. Um, I may not have pressed it all the way, because right now that hasn't gone on yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now it's talking to me. Welcome to Prius. It's telling me to put my seatbelt on. Um, what I find most difficult is, or, or not intuitive, is changing the gears here. Um, it's this tiny little space, and you just basically boop it off to the side. Like if you want to go into a reverse, let me put on the brakes, you just put it over and up. Shift to P position when starting. Okay. Oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to move it to P position. Will you shut up? Okay, I obviously I have no shift to P position when starting. Reverse. Drive. <laughs> this is not going well. This is what I have issues with. Is this stupid little stick thing and I feel like aren't I in the right place? What did I do wrong? It's and, you know, it's just this little stick thing, and up here it's telling me apparently I'm in neutral, and I try to put it in park, but I don't know what I'm doing. This was my issue earlier today. I, I have problems with this. Anyways, the AC is pretty easy to figure out. Um, there's no, like, actual button to adjust the temperature. You just kind of move it down if you want it, want it to be colder, move it up if you want it to be hotter, which is very similar to my Honda audio it's easy to turn on and you can actually press this so if I turn it on sorry um, you can just select things with your little finger you know if you want to change the station um, which is pretty cool um, other than that um, it does have two cup holders one the primary one this other secondary one is kind of a little bit hidden I really haven't explored much else of this car to be quite honest oh there's some little chargey things in there um, because I'm just trying to basically get um, get around, get myself to work, and then just return this car. How do I turn it off? Uh, what if I want to turn it off? Oh, that's what you do, actually. When you want to put the car into park, you can either do it manually up there, which I have no idea how to do, or you can press the little button right here, which puts it into park for you. So that's another tricky thing. And then to turn it off, hit the power button again. Hopefully. Hopefully that turns it off. Okay, press it a second time. I don't know. I do not know. Um, this car stresses me out <laughs> a little bit. 
you know, I'm so used to like my Honda Accord and, and then you get in this car with a little pressy button. And I know the woman at the dealership or the car rental place, um, she told me, make sure you hit the power button at the end because the car gets quiet. It doesn't make any noise. So I think a lot of people like you think, OK, I put it into park. Now I can leave, but they leave the car running. So um, that's what some people do. Now I'm just going to press some buttons. Oh, you know, what's funny is actually looking out the rear. It's kind of it's strange because the the back hatch is like split. Uh, it's uh, split in the middle. So your view is um, split. Anyways, let's see what is this? Oh, oh, wow. Look at all these things it has. Oh, interesting. This is just my little rental thing. The back seat. And I wish I could figure out how to open up the trunk. How do I how do I do the trunk? That's the gas. Oh, that's the gas. How do you open the trunk in this thing? That's the hood. I don't know. Okay, that's the shortest little car tour ever, but I don't know how to do the trunk. I don't know how to open it. The little key fob doesn't open it. Well, um, that's it for me today. I guess the, the day seems to be flying by, but I think it's because of all the car trouble and, you know, that took up a lot of time and now it's almost five, excuse me, five o'clock and I go back to work tomorrow. And so I still need to figure out exactly when I'm going to get my Honda back and, you know, return the Prius, but for now I'll try not to think about it. Um, I've got a busy week work ahead. A week of work ahead. I've got this big event on Tuesday that I need to prep for tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be busy preparing for this big meeting and then Tuesday I'll be working the meeting. So yeah, lots going on. Um, hey buddy, the cats have been extra cuddly recently because it's cold. Using the heated cat bed, I plugged it in for him. And this little one is probably going to start uh, begging for food pretty soon. <laughs> Because um, the closer it gets to five, the more he's like, feed me, feed me. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, kind of a, a short vlog. But, um, yeah, I hope that you had a good Thanksgiving. And um, it's almost December. What is happening? What is happening? All right, well, thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye.